Welcome to the Uncut Chronicles. I'm Crystal. I'm Andy. And we are coming to you with information and topics every day, such as culture, trending topics, shit your mammy probably don't need to hear. So come on in with us so we can share more with you about our day. Hey, everybody. I'm Crystal. And I'm Andy. And we want to welcome you back to the Uncut Chronicles. Where we normally just cut up on you all the time. And you know. What are we talking about today? Girl, let's talk about Amanda and Shannon Sharp's interview. Oh! I was thoroughly pissed off. I loved it. In, in a lot of really cool ways. In other ways, I was like, mm, but I enjoyed it. No? I didn't like it. I didn't like it because for a couple of reasons. Okay. One, Shannon Sharp, while he's admitted that he's not a journalist, he was not the person to facilitate that conversation. Mm. And... Sh- I feel like she knew that for a sense, but I think she wanted to be on the platform to speak her truth so bad. And she knows seeing that all these other celebrities have gotten on this platform and have spoken their truth that why not? Why I can't get on here and speak my truth? Because we all know that she has a reputation and, and I think at times she can be misunderstood. Agreed. And I feel like she felt like that platform was an opportunity for her to kind of clear the air like everybody else has been doing. Mm -hmm. But I think her going on that specific platform, expecting the level of intellect, I'm I'm perplexed. I'm perplexed. It actually made me dislike her even more. I'm so sorry. What? Like, I already had feelings about Shannon Sharp. And he's just like a, a jock with CTE. So it's just like, oh, what the fuck did you expect? He don't even know what he ate yesterday for breakfast. And you expect him to hold an intellectual conversation about black neurodivergence and race? First of all, you can come off, you can come off Shannon like that. Okay, I, okay. clearly playing football can can end boxing and other sports can have their challenges. The and neurons yes, aren't firing. And yes, brain damage is real. Okay, there, there are things we cannot see that are truly impactful. Y'all know how I feel about mental health. At the same time, he has done some amazing things. And I want to give him credit for that outside of the sports arena. Okay. And currently his platform, you must give this man credit whether you like him or not, that his platform is growing and thriving. And people do enjoy his interviews. I think they feel very palatable and relatable to the average everyday walking person. I like how you tried to fancy that up for dumb people. God but, damn okay. it, I did the best I could. You fancied that up. Well, you know what? That up. That's fine. Back to the interview. Listen, okay. So, <laughs> so I okay. First of all, Amanda is a very gifted person. Mm-hmm. Very gifted in numerous numerous platforms and uh, areas of her life. So I do, I think that an interview would have, would have missed, you know, Reed, Miss Joy Reed would have been dope for her. Oh yeah. Because Amanda is so intelligent and loves politics. And so that would have been a phenomenal, ooh, that y'all need to get together and do that. Like that was a really good idea. Um, send me my royalties later. Moving on. <laughs> but um, that's not what she chose. She chose to go pop mainstream kind of culture-ish not super pop main, but you know, almost main main. And so with that, give her credit. I do think she's severely misunderstood. I do really and truly, I really love her talent in a lot of different areas. I do understand why people misunderstand her. I do understand why people don't like her. I do understand why she feels like a lot of times she's misunderstood. I can see it all. Mm -hmm. And as other neurodivergent black women, AKA both you and I, we can understand Right? Yeah. So we want to first give credence to that. We're going to say neurodivergent only. We're not going to go with the magical, mythical titles that were given at the time of the interview because that was not accurate and that was a misrepresentation of a lot of things, whether it was intentional or unintentional. I don't think she did it intentionally. Mm. I mean, the words come out of her mouth on purpose, but I, don't think, but I don't think that she was out here trying to portray herself as something. I think after doing a lot of reading and research, she made an assumption about herself. I think that's what she did. She self-diagnosed like half of you people that get on WebMD thinking that you dying because your pinky toe is crooked. It's the same, same bullshit, different day. No? I mean, yeah. But my thing was with her where it it turned made me turn my ears off with her was 
the exchange between them when he asked her if she's clinically diagnosed and she oh, said yes yeah. there's a clinical diagnosis he said but have you been clinically diagnosed and she deflected from the question true and her rebuttal to that was I don't have to answer this man that's interrogating me about my you know about my situation or what I have and it's like Amanda bitch be fucking for real. He did not ask you if you had HIV or AIDS. He just asked you if you fucking had, if, did you get clinically diagnosed? And I don't, and I feel like that conversation was very harmful because then she gets back, she goes on her Instagram live yeah, yeah. and says, I'm not paying $8,000 to get clinically diagnosed for something I know I have. Baby, then you know how neurodivergent people can be where sometimes we can take things very literal. Mm -hmm. So then there are people who more than likely are very neurodivergent now getting deterred from being clinically diagnosed because they're thinking it costs thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to go through the healthcare system. And granted, it could, but there's so many resources out there that would cover those types of services and everything to get clinically diagnosed that I feel like her ignorant ass got up there trying to be a smart ass and trying to be the spokesperson for self-diagnosed neurodivergent people, that she just fucked that. Like, it just rubbed me the wrong way. Okay. And so in so many of the groups that I've been seeing that has been discussing her, where they share the same stance kind of like how you share, where they're like, I understand her. I understand her. And I get where she's coming from. But then, you know, there's the other side, like me, where it's like, well, bitch, what the fuck you get up there and do all that for? Yeah. Like, you was better off not saying anything. And I don't think everybody has to be clinically diagnosed. Does being clinically diagnosed help? Oh, absolutely. Like, I, I'm to attest. Being clinically diagnosed, it helps me a lot get through a lot of stuff. Especially, like, with work or special accommodations I may need. It does help. But I think her comments were very harmful and I think they were very ignorant because she obviously felt some type of way when Shannon asked her if she was clinically diagnosed and she felt some type of way. But I'm like, you're a fucking celebrity, bitch. AK is what you wipe your ass with every day. You couldn't go to the doctor? And you have a, you have a better advantage over every black and brown woman to going to the doctor, to getting what you want, because the majority of us had to jump through hoops yeah. just for someone to take us seriously and to say, like, hey, something is really wrong with you. Like, I, something's wrong with me. Like, I had, I, I didn't get diagnosed until so I was like 21, 22. Mm -hmm. But the signs were there since I was Zara's age. Mm -hmm. But because it shows up differently in girls, and specifically black girls, I was just overlooked as being bad. I was overlooked as being a smart ass. I was overlooked on all types of fronts. When it came down to like, oh yeah, actually no, something actually is wrong with you. Oopsie, my bad. That got passed over in the healthcare system. But you're a celebrity with the best and best bitch, your insurance probably cover it, God knows what, that you could walk in there and say, I have this, I have done the research, give me the test, boom. Okay, so, okay, that's true. I, I'll give you all that. But <clears throat> I still like her. Um, I do. Why? Because I, I uh, she's just an insufferable, and that's my issue. Oh, okay, that's the part that she was really talking like about. She's just fucking, like, insufferable. The, okay, you, you said she plays victim a lot. Yes. Be okay. Because when are you going to take accountability? Everybody's agreed. not fucking wrong agreed, about you. Agreed, agreed, agreed. Now, there is accountability, and you can't be an asshole, and you got to learn how to listen. One of the things about having one version of that particular type of personality, in my opinion, is that you have to understand your audience. You have to know who you're talking to, how to speak to them, how they're going to um, perceive you. And sometimes you got to soften that blow for people. And I feel like she learned that lesson maybe possibly a little too late mm -hmm. um, or maybe not completely yet. Mm -hmm. And so I feel that you got to be really charming and you have to be super understanding because, listen, there are certain groups of people I work with. They're like, hey, Crystal, can you do this? I could. <laughs> I, I could. And I can do it very well. But I won't. Why? Well... If I put on that hat, you might not like me as much because that hat is very, very straight to the point. It will get you to the goal. It'll be great. But 
it will require that you be willing to hear some tough truths. Not everybody's ready for that. I know enough about that part of my personality that when I take on certain roles in those other arenas, I have to give people the warning and I still soften the blows because it can be a lot. And then you get, you you don't want to be mislabeled. Now, you know, I think the whole little boo-boo just get mislabeled a lot, but it's because she does, she struggles with how to, how to um, temper her palate. I can agree with that. Mm-hmm. You can tell in the interview you saw she was doing it. Yeah, I, and I can agree with that, which is why I'm like, when you made that opening statement that we are both neurodivergent, so we understand. Like, I, I can be very socially awkward. I can get that. But you know what I do when I'm like that? I shut the fuck up. Really? Because you've never struck me socially awkward. I very much so am. And I think because my partner is very sociable that I'm easily able to be like... Praise God, I don't have to talk to anybody. And I could just stand there and be cute and I don't have to talk. But if I know, like, I, I think it takes also a level of self-awareness. Like, and everybody doesn't have that. I am extremely self-aware. Yeah, because I'm, I'm like, self-aware. I know when I'm being weird. I know, like, when I am on my best neurodivergent rabbit hole of conversation like I, I'm aware of these things socially where it's just like I'll just shut the fuck up all the way completely if I'm being weird I shut the fuck up if I think you're being weird I shut the fuck up um, if I'm uncomfortable I shut the fuck up true if I'm uncomfortable I will yeah like I just completely shut it down because that's just where my self awareness is about mm-hmm. what's going on with things but I don't ever sit over there and be like well I was being socially awkward because you told me my left shoe was ugly back in 96. (laughs) Wait, 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 wait. Okay, outside of her social lack of self-awareness at times, do you feel that in the interview, could you clock in a little bit on this interview and admit that she gave some great examples of when because people didn't like her, they did harmful things to her? Yes, but then I I think how with any story, there's two sides to the story because you also have to understand too, we can see things very black and white. Okay. And I and I can be very much so like that. Yes. Like, And you could probably even take that, me being black and white right now with talking about this topic because you're just like, you're so stronghold that this bitch is off her rocker and she she's just completely wrong. And I get it. We can see things black and white. So that's my thing with her where it's like, was, was it really that situation that happened or is that just how you perceive the situation? There were no, don't get me wrong. She named numerous, though. She gave numerous when examples. When she was talking about things that happened in school, things that has happened, that she's experienced, some of those things, I'm like, okay, those are valid experience. And yeah, I don't want to invalidate her experience, but we also have to be honest about what is your, our perception of what is happening. When is she went different. to the Hollywood party, come on now. What do you expect? Do you think she didn't get put out? You think she lied about getting put out? It didn't sound like a lie by any means. I don't think she lied about it, but what do you expect? Well, they didn't want her to come, but that wasn't her fault. Somebody else is inviting her in. It's the same thing with the oh, the whole fluidity thing. That wasn't her fault neither. I, but what do you expect? Like, you I don't put know. me in this group and didn't tell me if the other person's been here since day one, stay one? What is? What didn't do know you I was expect? coming? No, but what I'm trying to say is that's not fair. If I show up and you, you in the tap dance shoes group, <laughs> and, and y'all lost a member and now I'm here. I mean, that's like when Destiny's Child had them 8,000 members at that point of time in history, when every music video, you didn't know who was in a video and who wasn't because it was so many women changing all the time. Okay, she, they, the, the young lady, Marsha did not know she was coming. Surprise, she's here. And now she's like, and then she's like, up, oh, turn that mic off. Like, wait a minute. Cut that shit off. <laughs> Cut that shit short. So it's like, you know, of course it's going to be animosity. Um, It's horrible. But that wasn't her fault. She was paid to do a job. True. And she did it. And she said she showed up. She did her part. Like, she said, I I, I held on strong. I respect and value my contracts. What I say I'm going to do, I do. And I believe that. She kind of strikes me as a pretty direct person that way in that regard. So I feel like those are examples of her just getting... I think the shitty end of the stick. Now, does that mean in every situation she does? No. She does have some accountability. You cannot be that blunt and direct with everybody and think they're going to just love you. And that's where my issue lies with her as well. I don't think it had anything to do with the Hollywood party. And I don't think it had anything to do with the floor trip mess. I think with the Hollywood party, what the fuck did you expect? What do you mean regarding what? The fact that she showed up when somebody yeah. invited her? I would, if I already know a whole group of people feel some type of way about me, I'm not coming to the party. I don't give a fuck who invited me. Mm. I'm not coming. 
You know they don't fuck with you and you really, let's be real, you don't fuck with them. But don't get on here pleading and say, I want a community, I want family, I want this, I want that. And so then when celebrities reach out to you, well, well, then all of a sudden some random story come out how they did you wrong. I'm but it's a bunch of dirt doers. Let's be real too. There are a bunch of grimy but people know in the industry. What industry you're in, you can't have Wait friends in this industry. I, I'm gonna say the cat not teach you anything. Cause I know you was watch, you watch Club Shay Shay, and, and I you know see why cat was in there. Like you can't fuck with these people who y'all think are so great and wow. When we put them on platforms, they are shitty people. So my thing is how Amanda is as a person. Hollywood is not her cup of tea. Oh, okay. There you go. Now you're cooking with gas. Now we're talking it's, about something. It's not your cup of tea. So why do you keep crying and saying everybody is alienating you? And this? They don't want you there. Nor do you belong there. And not saying that she don't belong there because of her talents or anything of that nature. But who you are as a person and what you bring to the table and the directness and realness that you want... You're not going to get it in a superficial environment. You're not okay, getting that's, it. I, I completely one quadrillion million percent agree with that. You you got to know. Your, first of all, mm, all right, here's the thing. You have to have different. I don't know. It's like a kaleidoscope. Like you got to have different angles and, and shades and colors. You got to be willing to do that. And I think that for her personality, that's not the that's not her personality. And even if it is in there, it may not be the part of her that she chooses to allow to shine the most. And so you're right. If you want honesty and directness and straightforwardness all the time, Hollywood ain't it, boo. No. It never will be. You got to learn to giggle, <laughs> eat some cake and shit, smile a little bit, rub some elbows, say somebody is pretty if they're not, unfortunately. <laughs> and, you know, put on some things. I mean, you really got to be willing to play the role while still being a real human to yourself and to those you mean a lot to. And if you're not willing to play the game and just also have a little fun because you don't want to be the uptight person people know isn't fun. Because then you don't get invited because you're not fun. Now, I'm, there's, there's a thousand levels of fun in hell. Okay? Thousand levels. Thousand, I didn't say go level 1,000. But I'm going to need you tap down to about 50. You know, maybe level 100. Because if you don't, people are going to not invite you then because you come across as being uptight. Which some people, I think, perceive her that way. Um, but it doesn't mean she can't have a standard. No. You can have a standard and still have fun. Oh, for sure. So I feel like... She just struggles with doing that. Like you said, if you cannot understand that this is not an industry with your personality type that's going to interest, you know, have you being friends with a lot of people or a lot of connections, it's going to be a rough road. I think that's just the reality of where she is. Yeah, and and that's why I'm like, you have to stop crying and thinking every, like, sir, I will give you that. Not crying. Certain situations, was she wrong? Yes. Yes, she is. But then you also have to realize the type of people that you are fucking dealing with. Be real about it. You and she grew up in a really listen. I could let me tell you, I could relate so much in some areas, not in others, but it, but in some really cool ones. I grew up very similar. Like I grew up in entertainment. I grew up um, auditioning. I grew up, you know, with education being very very important in my household. Um, and my mother was like, "Listen, you're different. You're very different. You're always going to be very different." OK, so when you go places, please don't expect people to be like, sing your praises. Like, you know, she just kind of, you know, prepared me for that quite a bit all the time. Um, but then she also taught me what to do in a lot of situations where it wasn't working because the people were like, Mm-mm. and so that's why I said I can really relate in a lot of ways to her. And also having that extremely high standard because she has a very high standard in a lot of things um, in the way she carries herself, in the way she speaks, in the role she accepts, the work that she does. Um, she has a high standard. And so that's awesome, except most people around you do not have a standard that high. And so if you don't temper that and if you don't learn to like, in my opinion, if you don't want to tunnel that just right, it'll eat you alive yeah. because you'll be by yourself a lot. And so you have to learn, like, find your little nerdy group that you have high standards with and you just veg out with them. And if everybody else, you're going to wild out and have fun because that's really the way you kind of have to balance it. You got different groups with different things. And there's a lot of people who don't have extremely high standards. Yeah. And that's why I'm like, you can't project to an extent on other people. You just, you can't. And I and I just I think not, she gets offended really easily. And she does. And I get and I get it sometimes. I get it. But at the same time, it's like Amanda, Buki, everybody is not you. Yes. And you have to learn to be cool with that. 
Like she tried to say, like everybody say I'm difficult, but when I was working on a set when I was a kid, they had an a evaluation about me, and it was so short. They just said a man is great and walked out, unlike unlike everybody else. I'm like, yes, you were a child. But that's because she followed directions. And even in a lot of her nightmare stories about her experiences, she's still following directions, which is why she's struggling. Because she's like, but I followed the directions. And didn't you say that a lot of neurodivergent people are very direct? Direct and black and white. Black and white. In her world of black and white, in her mind, she followed the directions. Why don't you like me? And it's like, it maybe don't work like that. That's not the only ingredient anymore because you're not a kid. Exactly. You're an adult, so it requires more interaction, more socializing, more learning to nod your head and be like, well, girl, if you like it, I love it. Like, you have to learn to kind of go with the flow a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, but the question is, is she trying to do that in her social as well as her professional? Because her professional can sometimes blur into a social. Yeah, and I, and I swear... You know how some people are like <laughs> separate the the artist from the music. Uh -huh. She's one of the people like I loved her role in Issa and mm -hmm. Insecure. I loved I actually that's what made me start liking her. Yeah, I really liked her. I was like, oh my gosh, she is so fucking funny. Oh, do 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 do. And when I started seeing more of a man outside of Issa, I said, that's not the same bitch. <laughs> <laughs> no, like you're actually no. I actually don't like you. I'm so sorry. And people are like, well, you don't like her because she's a cop. No, I'm all. But she said that Issa made the mistake that Issa said, I'm sorry. I have been treating you according to your character. I was like, wow. Because she and I will give it. She played that character so well she really did. that it almost made you think that's her real personality. Right. Or is it an assumption according to culture because she is a person of uh, lighter skin complexion mm -hmm. and people just made an assumption I never thought that about her but I understood when people did I'm like oh you're just taking the cultural assumptions and you're just blending them into a reality mm -hmm. and, and I I love down bad loved her character mm -hmm. but and I was like but a lot of people are like are do you do you not like the way what conversation she had and I said no because like I could relate to her when I took an Africana studies class mm -hmm. baby that opened my eyes about a whole lot of shit that I was like Damn, so black history don't stop at Obama and Martin Luther King. Absolutely not. Oh. Like, these are the atrocities that were really happening that, like, weren't in that, uh, what do you call them books? Them Preston Hill books that we was reading at school. <laughs> like, this was this this was a lot more than yeah. picking cotton and, and slaves being free by Abraham Lincoln. Like, this go way deeper. Like, lynching book deeper than what I thought. Yeah. So I get like, you know, hey, I got that. Like, I'm I want to I want to have these conversations and have these like put this stuff on a platform and talk about these things because they're not talked about. They're not. No, they're not. Absolutely right. But see, for me, I don't know. Well, no, no, you're right. They're not talked about. But the reason why that's like it's not shell shocked me. But I grew up in a home where with a very pro black mother and my dad was laid back. And so but well, we grew up in a very my, my mother's house still looks like a black history museum from several centuries ago like people come in they just stare because the whole entire house is like goals like it's it you Goals. understand when you're eight though and your friends come over they're like wow and you're like yeah you want to go you want to play or not like barbies or not and um you know so i grew up in a very pro-black home i grew up in a house that also was tons of black history non-stop from morning to night you'd be able to walk around and repeat the people on the wall tell about their history tell what they did like and I was homeschooled. So when I tell you that the bar was set extremely high and my, my mother was a history buff, mm -hmm. she loved it. So um, I can very much relate to her in those areas. But with that being said, though, think about it. Do you think she said that men oftentimes tell her they want to date her because they want to tame her? Now, you, we have to talk about this because, first of all, she cannot be tamed. Second of all, why are we trying to tame anybody? Like, I'm not interested in any of that. I feel like a lot of incel men get off on that. Where they, like, and I've, I've I've had that experience where I'm like, well, if, what do you want from me? And it literally, they just want to dim your light. Like, to say, I conquered you. I got you to come down off this pedestal. Or I got you to lower your standard. I got you to shut the fuck up. I did that. I don't think it's even about like anything other than saying I humbled you. Oh, oh, so taming is about humbling? I I believe so because taming I feel like a, there's humbling. so many pick me as bitches that will do pick exactly me. what you want them to do. They want it, they want to be barefoot pregnant in the kitchen cooking, cleaning. Yes, man, so sucking dick. All of that. I me personally I just fucking passed out. 
I want to smoke yes, weed master, and yes, I want to play on the iPad and you didn't, can you bring me something to eat? <laughs> those, are two, those are two fucking complete extremes. Exactly. So I'm like, <laughs> yes, a master and sucking dick. And I, like, I don't, I don't mind giving back to my weed. partner, but don't make me seem like I'm just like a, a fembot ass slave. Like that's all I'm supposed mm. to be doing. And I feel like there's bitches out here that would do that, but True. they don't want them. Because they're already submissive. They already want to do what you told them to do. They don't want that. They want the challenge of trying to bring down women that they feel like are too high up on their pedestal. Too high. What does too high up on the pedestal look like? I'm, I'm just asking because I'm in my head. I'm like, you, wait, is it me? I? Shut up. Amanda? We are. I, listen, we're fun. I mean, but a lot of men want to what, what is turn that? it down. Turn what down? The fun. The in- intellect, the ability to where I know you're wrong and I can hold you, I will hold you accountable for what the fuck you did. But they don't want that. They want you to shut the fuck up, barefoot, pregnant in the kitchen, cooking, cleaning, sucking dick. All those things sound fun too, though. For no. the record. Maybe the, other, maybe the last cooking. part. I love cook. I love all the things. All those things sound fun, along with the intellect, along with on, on going on the trips. All of that blended together sounds like a hell of a good time. If I'm barefoot, I'm having fun. I'm grounding. I'm earthing. If I'm cooking, I like to cook because it's fun. So cooking is fun to me. That stress me out. Fucking is fun. It is. Traveling is fun. But when we do those things, I feel Intellect like it needs to be fun. balanced. Listen. But you can't say, give you, it all. you can't me. take me, or you can't put me in the box and say, this is, you're a female. This is all you good for. Oh, no. Uh, you, and I feel like that's, what, that's that. what a lot of them do. Um, a lot of them in some men put you in that box. That's all you good for. Russell Wilson doesn't put Sierra in a box. Okay, that's a different breed of man. There are a lot that, of those. There are still a lot of those out there. That's a different breed there of man. There are a lot of those out there. Mm, they are. The numbers have dwindled. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, they are going instinct. Like, let me tell you something. <laughs> I don't know. When the rise of Samuel, Kevin Samuels happened, Oof. I feel like the numbers, like, it was probably like, right, like a good middle ground uh-huh. when he came on the rise I feel like the numbers just plummeted <gasps> and I was like wow they're t- the struggle but they're still out there so here's my thing I, I when she said that men try to tame her I was like I believe it and I and I do I like as I thought about it and imagined it in my mind I'm like oh sis shit that's probably true but then I think there are other demographics I think she has to date certain types of men number one like you mm-hmm. said Probably a non Hollywood, probably a non Hollywooder, mm-hmm. or he needs to be on a different side of things, uh, production, business, et cetera, something different. Mm-hmm. And then I think that maybe dating men um, from other Black American men, as well as men from other countries as well. Because her mother's West Indian. So mm-hmm. put your toe in that water. Men from um, all types of Africa. Like, let, let's just go on a voyage. I, I think she needs to find mm-hmm. another neurodivergent man. Okay, and she can do that. But if she finds a gentleman who is just as driven as she is, who loves intellect the way she does, like, I really think that she's actually, it, it's not really as hard. It's the pool she's swimming in. She's probably swimming in that little bit of Hollywood pool, and that's going to be a problem. That's going to be a big problem because you don't have a BBO, and Shut you, ain't, you ain't been passed through the industry. So, yeah, that's probably a big problem for her. A, you got to have a BBL and be passed through the industry. That's the requirements. She already light skin without the funny face. Damn. She didn't need the BBL. Kat said that was a requirement. She she checked a couple of the boxes, but she don't got the BBL. BBLs are so played out, though. She got to have the BBL. But it's not a requirement. If you want them Hollywood people, yes, it is. Half them she doesn't even want. That's you said why they I'm got like, shitty personalities. Why are you in that pool then? That's true. Get out of that pool. Get you with get up with activists or something. Hell, Ooh. get you an a, a activist that will align with what you're trying to do. But stop trying to force. That's like me going into like a room of people and trying to force people to be what I want them to be. They're not going to do that. That's a room full of individuals with their own issues, with their own personalities, and me saying, "Well, I want all of you to be like me, and then all of you to have all of these qualities." Isn't everybody be like, "Bitch, get the fuck up out of here"? So I feel like that's what she does. You're not going to have people that are, you can't force people to be what you want them to be. You are in a very shallow ass, crazy, demonic ass Hollywood circle. 
They're not going to be what you want them to be. They don't give a fuck about activists. They don't give a fuck about what's right, what's wrong. It's what keeps the money flowing in, what keeps them relevant. So if you want to surround your people, surround yourself with people that are like-minded, take a step back from Hollywood, go get in a group of people that she really said she's today rappers. And that sounded fun for her. Now I did say fun. I did not say like long lasting, but it did sound fun for her because a lot of rappers, especially those when they're first starting out, depending on what they're rapping about, do really align and care a lot about community. Maybe she needs to try common. Common's the <gasps> pass around. The pass around did common? Yeah. The car wash because common? he Because he's smart enough. He's smart enough. Girl, and he lying. knows his place. Does he? He knows What place is that? To shut the fuck All up the and let me shine. He oh, know- oh, oh, you know what? God damn it, you're I'm right. He does shut the fuck up. He dates a, very, a lot of high profile women. Let's, we, I don't want to ignore the Tiffany Haddish part, but he dates a lot of high profile women. But never once have I seen Common try to overshadow these women, try to humble these women. Try you to- can't overshadow nobody when you're a B list. Like, no offense, you have talent, but because you choose to talk and rap about things you choose to do, uh, and Hollywood doesn't want to respect that, which is not fair to him, but it makes you B list for them. So you can't overshadow A-list when you're B-list. I'm so sorry. Well, you know what? She can't date him. She'll eat him a lot. No, I feel like they would be compatible. How so? Because he knows how to shut the fuck up and let her talk. But, and I she's, like not, she but she's not dominating, though. No, but she is very headstrong where she needs someone to either match that or be more than that than her. Oh, yeah. I agree with that. So I'm like... So then why date him then? Because I feel like Common would be a good starter person for her. Uh, he a jump off. Okay, got you. Yeah. He oh, okay. he one of them good groupie dudes that's like good for you. Like you still get your pro black stuff because he comment loves to have those type of conversations. Yeah, that's true. He's very in tune about what's going on. Common's very smart, super smart guy. He's good looking. Yeah. And he knows how to shut the hell up. And according to Erica Badu, he can he can massage some fucking feet. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, so that's the Erica type of man I'm you massaging I'm everything, feet, okay, souls, brain I'm sure waves. they were doing some freaky ass stuff. So I'm like, this I, shit got, I can only imagine got incense called pussy. I mean, just in case, and, and they imagine. sell out, and they sell out. So clearly, somebody loves. Me. All I'm saying is, <laughs> give him a try, man. That's all I'm saying. Everybody else has <laughs> He's nice a starter one. package, he, but he's okay, a starter. Okay, but think about it. If Kendrick Lamar was not married. Okay, and he was single with no no family, you know, no extra ties. Um, that is what no. she, 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 And I'm yeah. speaking from another Gemini perspective yeah, and shut, somebody is with a Gemini partner. No, li- okay, fine. And okay, that that's, okay, fine. I, I hear what you're saying on that, but just hear me in the black and white of things. Mm. He's intelligent. Mm-hmm. He cares about community. Mm-hmm. He uh, very much speaks his mind. Mm-hmm. He's a leader. Mm-hmm. What else you need? He gonna make his. He's gonna make his art, make his music, and he's going back to the house. He not about to be out here shucking and jiving these parties with people because he doesn't give a fuck. Okay, so boom, she can't even go to the parties anyway because she's not invited. Well, that's the thing though. I don't want to have a partner that's disliked by everybody all the fucking time. But he's. But it's not that he gonna be like. Let's go over here. Like let's go hang hang. Like he's gonna want to go to like the real stuff, the down to earth stuff, but the real people. Like Kendrick's not trying to float no circles. Like, he's gonna teach her to stop desiring it as well and um, rise above because you're already up there. So just keep floating. I feel like Kendrick is too much for her. What I do? Somebody's too much for her. Mm-hmm. I think Kendrick's too much for her. Might be, and I think that. While Kendrick is who he is, he's still. What? Are you saying that he wants him barefoot and all that? Yes. I'm sick of your motherfucking shenanigans. Wow. Are you serious? Yep. I mean, it might arouse him a little bit, but I don't think it's a requirement. I ain't heard a peep from his wife. Does she need to be peeped from? I mean, I'm trying to understand. I ain't heard she's at home from his enjoying wife. life, minding her business. They're going on trips. Like, what does she need to be? What, what do y'all need I to know her for? from her? Because you know why? You know why? He de- listen. First of all, you fucking right, and I don't like that. <laughs> Second of all, <laughs> the reality is is that he don't need y'all up in her face anyway. He don't need y'all judging her. He doesn't need you guys crucifying her for what she looks like, doesn't look like, what she drives, what she carries, because that is Hollywood bullshit. And she's probably not even a person that glorifies those things. Right. But then you dated somebody like a man who's very outspoken, who is in the public eye, 
who does have very controversial opinions, who does have very controversial conversations, which I mean, sometimes that can be subjective, but matching her with him. No, that's why I said she need to start a pack comment. She need to come and start a pack. Get with him. Let him massage your feet when you come home all day from hollering and yelling at everybody. And then... Sounds so boring. You know, Comet don't be all in the places either no more. So you, both of y'all asses can be fucking home. At least Common is neutral where you can get in some fucking parties. So he is a neutral party. But I... She need a starter pack rapper like Common. Who is, who is very conscious of what's going on. Who was... He just... She it was very sheer butter. <laughs> and, and just where, okay, where, do you, where do you go from Common though next what's her next option it can't be Dr. Umar <gasps> oh no I mean the conversations they would have probably be out of this world but it can't be Dr. Umar because he wants her home he definitely wants her home so more than Kendra just start with just start with Common that doesn't last long his track record is a short one I know but that give you time to, to plot your next one. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about this. <laughs> to give you time. Somebody else will be on the rise. I say Noah Trevor, but him and his wife, he just kind of dragged her a little bit. Really? I think her and Noah Tre- Amanda and Noah Trevor would be good too. Actually, let me think. Or like a Don Lemon, but Don Lemon's gay. True. But still, like if Don Lemon so like, did she, like women. You think she needs like a super palatable guy? Like super, super palatable? Like you keep yes, having very palatable she needs, people. She needs somebody to balance her out. Like she's not, like, okay, me and my partner. He is very likable. Okay. He's very, yeah, so you've he talked, is. he's uh-huh. very likable, very sociable. Me, it's like, Hmm, I can go either way. Either you really like me or you really don't like me. That's always my extreme. I've never understood when you say that, though, what people don't like about you. Like, I haven't seen the unlikable qualities yet. I think what people don't like about me sometimes is kind of how, like, Amanda says, like, I'm very direct. I can be very crass. And I know people don't like that. Mm -hmm. Um, I can be very vulgar. People don't like that. Um, I'm not um, in the... I just... I think literally... I just told Santiago this. <laughs> hey, Santiago. <laughs> but I just told Santiago, like, I don't like surface level conversation. Like, I have no desire to have... Like, I don't... Give, you don't give a fuck about how my day is. Let's be real. But what happened back in 96 that traumatized you and made you the person you are today? Mm. And people don't want to talk about that. And I understand that, but I want to talk about it because that helps me understand what kind of person you are. Okay, I completely agree. But I think that, first of all, your partner is very likable, and that's true. But I think you're likable, too. And I think what makes that fun is that I think that people can't put you in a box. Like, you sound like this, but you look like this, but you talk like this, but you enjoy this. Like, it's like, whoa, wait, wait. It's like playing ping pong. They don't know where to go. What do you do? And I think that's also makes me unlikable with some people because they can't black. put me in the box. And you like anime? Yeah. What? They can't put me in the box. And so they like, like no, don't know. Pink? What? It's a lot. It's a lot. But it's fun. So, you know. But the, and, but a lot of people don't like that. They're like, I know, I want you, like, even when I go out with my partner and he we go out and he meets different people and stuff like that, um, I, I don't talk because I'm like, I already know what type of person you think I'm on, what type of time I'm on. And I don't hate to explain myself and try to make me make myself likable when it's either you like me or you don't. And I feel like I'm one of those people, like, I'm slow to warm up. Like, when you first meet me, I'm probably like, mm, okay, she seemed cool. But, like, when you actually get to know me, I'm actually nuts as fuck. But I'm a lot of fun. You're a shit ton of fun. But that's what I'm saying with Amanda. Like, I feel like, okay, okay. But out the gate, she's got a bunch of dope, likable qualities. But it's her delivery. And I, cause that's why she could date rappers because she is fun and she's from the South and she knows how to entertain and she's sarcastic as shit, which I, I love admire a good her dose intellect. of sarcasm. That's all I got for her. I admire her intellect. Ugh, this is giving. Like, I, I, outside of all her other bullshit, like, her intellect is what I admire the most about her. Like, I would like to actually sit down and, like, conversate with her. Like, leave all the, <laughs> leave all the other shit at the dough. But other topics, like, I would like to conversate with her. But outside of that, I don't see any, like, redeemable qualities about her. I'm sorry. I'm so disappointed. And I hate to tear apart another black woman like that. But I just, I don't see any redeemable qualities with her. Let me ask you a question completely off topic. Do you like Tiffany Haddish? No. 
Oh, okay, because if you said yes, we was about to we was about to squabble. She, I didn't, she never sat right with me when she came on the scene because I feel like she like when I first saw her in that BET commercial, and I was like, who the fuck is this shucking and jiving menstrual ass? What are you doing? Uh, okay, because I was just wondering, like, do you feel like a person with that type of personality? I think I think that poor baby's just like kind of lost in the sauce. Like, I think she Tiffany is who Tiffany. Now that one thing I will say, Tiffany is who she is. Oh yeah, I was she, so is Amanda. she is. Amanda is who she is. Okay, okay, okay. I can, I can, I can, I can absorb. I can accept the fact that you. Yes, okay. That is true. That is true. There should be classes for this. Somebody's be teaching a class. I mean, I don't want to have to do it. Don't make me do it. But I think there's a class needs to be taught on how to have more self awareness of oneself. Mm -hmm. Also, how to be mindful, how to deliver your personality to others. You know, all in one, because I think that it is an art form. Yeah. And I and I think also they're, they're like to kind of just wrap this up. But I, I think also like it, it, there needs to be more education on neurodivergence of course. as well, of course. especially specifically in the black community. I think that Amanda. And this could be subjective, whether she made herself the poster child of that or not, that she needs to like step out of that conversation. That's my personal opinion. It's about a what conversation? Neurodivergence oh, okay. altogether. Agreed, agreed. Step agreed. out of that conversation. Because the fact that you got defensive about somebody asking you if you were clinically diagnosed told me every, that you need to just sit down and shut the fuck up. So, and I think she needs to, have, her team needs to pick better platforms for her. Mm-hmm. You went on Shannon Sharp. And and I mean, it was mutually was, yeah, beneficial. Shannon got his views. You got your platform. Okay. Y'all both got what y'all want out of it. I enjoyed the interview. I enjoyed the fact that, but she did say, well, she did get on there saying that she didn't like the interview. But anyways, the part I didn't understand, I ha- I will give her a little credit on this one, but then I also didn't like the other side of it, is that she said that she sent in pictures of her family uh, at least a week plus before the show. So then when he made the statement about saying that her mother was white and she was like, my mom is not white. Who keeps saying that? She's like, my mom is a black woman from Grenada, which is a black country. Like, what are y'all doing and why are you saying this? You've seen pictures of my family. She's right. If that was the case, Nate, and that they turn in those pictures, then why is that being touted? And why'd that even come up? Like, I got to give her credit on that. At the same time, why, after you leave the show, please don't, please don't, don't, please don't start crying and start yeah. bashing. And that's because, what I didn't like come about on, that. You just, you just benefited from the platform. So th- this gives people the illusion that this is the difficulty that some might be resonating with. So I don't want that to be the case. It was just a bad choice. It, it was it was for her. It was, just it was a bad choice. She shouldn't have did it. And then you shouldn't have went on there and bashed Shannon after you just asked to be on his platform. Yeah. So, and I'm pretty sure he did not ask you. You Your team asked them. But anywho, maybe we'll do a part two to this because I feel like there's still more to discuss. I don't know. I think we have to blend in her personality with some other episodes and have a little conversation. I think it has to be had. So, you know, we just have to give it to y'all raw and uncut because here's Uncut Chronicles, y'all. We're talking about it all. And your girl, she needed a conversation. I mean, the streets were talking. They are. And I was talking too. Shit. <laughs> Clearly, you feel some some type of way about this. <laughs> so, I'm Crystal. And I'm Andy. And this is shit. Yo, mammy can't hear, boy. <laughs> Maybe you let her hear this one, though. <laughs> let her whisper to me. <laughs> Turn it down, though. <laughs> Peace. Bye. The Uncut Chronicles is part of the Breaking Ice, Building Bridges community podcast platform brought to you by Possibilities. 